I'm Scott Bainbridge, and I am presenting a multi-part video series on physical examination, and we are doing spine-specific, low-back-specific exams as well, but this particular video will be my screening neurological exam. And so I have already spoken with the patient, observed their cognition, speech patterns, affect, etc., and I'm going to get into the remainder of the neurological exam, which I'll start with reflexes. Obviously, I'll do both sides in a normal exam. I'll focus on one side for the purposes of demonstration and to move the video along. And we'll start with biceps reflex. I tense the tendon and obtain that reflex. So C5-6 reflex, brachioradialis, Morrison 6, triceps, C7, they're often mixed a little bit, six and eight in there. And I'll work down patellar reflex, L234, probably more 34, Achilles, primarily one, maybe some adjacent roots as well. Then I'll do plantar response, looking for that Babinski uh, response, hers is normal. Check clonus with an abrupt pull up of the foot. And I'm looking for one or two beats is normal. You get into the four to six or sustained category, then that's abnormal. Then I come back up and I'll do Hoffman's. And I flick the fingernail of the third digit. I'm looking for a grasping. If that happens once or twice but extinguishes, that's fine. If it continues, that's abnormal. We'll do sensory testing. I use a pinwheel and ask for any abnormalities, does it feel dull, hypersensitive, are there changes side to side? C5, kind of down in this police patch or lower area. Up in here we have some C3, 4, uh, it depends on who you read. C4 maybe further out, a little mixture, 3 and 4 in here. Um, we'll go down to the dorsum of the hand towards the thumb side, radial side. This is a C6 and 7 crossover. I'll go to the palmar aspect. And this is also radial sensory distally, median nerve, C6, 6, 7 crossover, third digit, C7. Fourth digit is interesting. A little median on the this side, ulnar on this side. We get into this fifth digit, C8, ulnar nerve. You can try to do some T1 testing up in here, and we'll go down to the lower extremity. I'll um, look at this L3 medial distal thigh pattern. I'll come up to the upper anterior thigh for L2, get just below the, the inguinal crease, L1, and then I can step up there if I need to or go to the thoracic spine. I like this uh, medial leg, saphenous nerve, L4. That's where I go for that. Lateral, more L5, but it's a little bit of a crossover with some S1 occasionally. Dorsum of the foot, L5. Peroneal distribution. Lateral foot, sural nerve, but S1 distribution. And again, checking both sides. I'll check strength. Arms up like this push up against me. So looking at deltoid, primarily C5. If they're very strong, I may use some leverage like this. Arms like this. Bicep, five and six, pull against me. Push out. This is tricep, primarily seven. Bring the wrists back towards you. So look at the back of your, your wrists and pull back and lock that wrist. And go ahead and lock and resist me. Primarily C6, fingers straight out, lift up with the fingers, C7, and spread your fingers apart. And these were radial nerve, the, this is more primarily an ulnar nerve function, go ahead and spread apart against me, very good. Squeeze my fingers, squeeze, 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 primarily C8, um, Hold your thumb right there. I'm going to come at your thumb. You hold it steady. Don't let me move it. Dr. Paulus's brevis. Median nerve, C8-T1. This is also C8-T1. We'll go to hip flexors. Hip flexors, L2, 3, um, primarily. Lift that knee against me. 
This uh, can be weak even with cervical myelopathy. Sometimes this is the, one of the initial weak areas to show up. Push into my hand, extend that knee with the quads, femoral nerve L234, pull back with those hamstrings, and that's a variety, L4, 5, S1, 2. Bring the feet up, pull up against me, and up and in, kind of a, a pattern like this, pull up and hold. Anterior tib, L4 and 5 mixture, bring the toes up and hold up the EHL, extensor hallucis longus, primarily L5, can be a little S1, feet up and out, ankle everters, S1 primarily, can be 5, a little S2, according to who you read. Um, I'm going to have you stand and walk on your toes, looking at those gastrocs, largely an S1 function, and on your heels, and L4 and 5, um, looking for drop foot, L5 radiculopathies will show up as weakness with heel walking. I want you to walk normally but quickly to the corner, turn and walk back. And I'm often looking at gait, looking for spastic components, any other abnormalities of gait. The purpose of the quick turn is to see if there's any balance disturbance. Sometimes that's an early sign of myelopathy as well. Go ahead and face me with your heels together, arms in front, close your eyes, with this finger touch your nose, and with this finger touch your nose. So we're kind of combining Romberg's finger to nose testing uh, at the same time. Open your eyes, you can put one hand comfortably in front of you, take your other, hit front, turn it, hit back, front, back, front, back. And alternating hand motions, go ahead to the other side, kind of a coordination, cerebellar function among others. Look at my, and then I'll jump to cranial nerves, look at my fingers, follow with your eyes. And in, close your eyes real tight and open. A little tough to see your pupils, but that's what I'm looking for. Nice smile, so I'm looking at that. Close your eyes real tight again. Close your eyes tight, 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 good. And open again. Stick your tongue out. Back and forth, good. Can you hear this? So I'm the same there. Do these feel the same side to side? Push your chin against me. And here, all right. And then I'll get into other aspects of my musculoskeletal exam if indicated. I think that's a reasonable screening exam uh, for general neurological function. Thank you.